time I came to Cuba, I didn't really get to know it well enough. I ended up walking around Old Havana and it was beautiful, but I didn't really get in depth with Cuba until the second trip that I made in 2001, where I spent 10 days here. And that's when lucky, luckily I had someone who knew everything about um, the insider tips, to the music, to the dance. I loved the music so much and I wanted the rest of the world to see what Cuba had to offer. When you walk on the street, it's the same when you dance salsa. Okay? A step, a step, a step. A step, a step, a step. Up the step, a step, a step. Very good. Give me five. Lo tengo todo cuadrado, lo tengo todo en orden. No quiero vivir de tu desengaño, ni que siga haciendo daño. Recoge todo y todo pingao, y ten cuidado. In Cuba, parents absolutely want their kids to be in the arts, music, dance, to be artists, painters, the things that generally in the U.S. we don't push our kids to do because it doesn't really make any money. But in Cuba, those are the professions that make the most money. And in Cuba, those are the professions that are the most respected. It's what goes to the heart of the Cuban people is, is really the arts. I think that's what makes them as passionate and as friendly and as sweet as they are. That's what really made me fall in love with Cuba. I need to make the same process maybe 10 times more to this stone is ready. Starting this tour company, it was always my dream, but it wasn't possible before since it was not legal to travel to Cuba. People to people travel basically means that you have a full schedule of activities every day where you meet the Cuban people and you're having exchanges with them where you're learning from each other. And an important point about people to people is that that's basically what cultural island travel specializes in. Because of my 20 years of connections with Cuban artists and dancers and musicians and just about everyone from every walk of life here, we do have those connections and we do bring people to see things like a jazz concert in someone's home 
or visiting a famous painter. Those are not experiences that you stumble upon or experiences that you have just walking around. My name is Patricia Morgowski. I worked for CIT for four years. I work on the ground in Cuba as a tour leader, as a manager, a producer, and fixer. One of my favorite places in Cuba is Trinidad. It is an absolutely beautiful colonial town that's literally stopped in time. Some people think Havana stopped in time, but it is to a certain degree, but there's been so much advancement, everything from cool restaurants and bars to hotels to B&Bs. And while that kind of exists in Trinidad, it still maintained its colonial essence and it's just absolutely beautiful. So I definitely like taking clients there. In terms of nature, it's absolutely gorgeous. It has so many untouched lakes and rivers and no pollution and it's just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful place. Another incredible example of artistry in Cuba is all of these incredible jazz musicians that we have the honor to book and see in private shows. Hector Quintana is another. He's an incredible electric guitarist who absolutely blows you away. He often plays with a girl named Yisi, who is a female drummer who literally can kick any male drummer's butt. The, the access to, to artists here is really incredible when you know your way around the country and the city and, and when you have a lot of friends here. So it's really great to be able to offer that to our clients. It's not really like a tour, it's kind of like having a friend. Our tour guides are basically like a local friend that knows everything about Cuba and that can take you into people's homes, into people's lives, and to learn about the true culture of Cuba. Well, my name is Mario Otero. I have been working for CIT for the last two years. I am half Cuban and half Spanish, but I have been living here for my whole life. I would say that I love to bring my clients to Viñales. Viñales is a UNESCO World Heritage, and it has one of the most amazing landscapes in Cuba. Also, we take there our visitors to see the process of growing of cigar. As you know, Cuba is one of the best cigar producers in the world. And we take them to the house of Montesino. Montesino is a, a farmer that his family has been actually for four generations uh, growing cigar for the Coiba brand. As you know, Coiba is like the best Cuban cigar brand. And this guy show all the interior details of how to make the best cigar in the world. Bueno, son bienvenidos a la tierra donde se cultiva el tabaco negro de sol. Llegó la hora de bailar. Everything here is totally manual. Actually, that's one of the reasons that Cuba cigar is the best in the world. Here, everything is totally manual, even in the factory. Todo manual y todo natural. And also natural. El que decía que el son nunca muere, no se equivocó. El que decía que el son es de Cuba. How is that, right? Smell. Now we're going to see the, the whole process. It smells like a cigar. Just like a cigar. In this particular case is going to be doing one of the most uh, popular vitolas, the century number two or siglo two. Una semana después están listos para fumar. That last week will be for uh, let him dry. If you want to try one, for you go. For sure, I don't consider this like a real work because I'm actually doing what I really love to do and I'm, I really enjoy to share my culture, share all the interesting things about my country with uh, visitors. There are a handful of really amazing restaurants that we like to take our clients to. Being a foodie myself, <laughs> I really like to take our, our clients to have the best food and the best drinks in Havana, the best places. So that's one of the highlights of our tour as well.
again, as we're a company that goes even further into the experience, we don't want you to just ride in the cars. We want you to know more of the history behind the cars. So we took our clients to Fernando, who is one of the mechanics on the first ever reality show filmed in Cuba. It's on the Discovery Channel called Cuban Chrome. He's super passionate about his cars. He has a, a really old Ford that he lets some of our clients drive sometimes. <laughs> Well, we are right now at uh, Fernando's house. Fernando is one of the most popular mechanics in Havana. He takes care of renovation of all the cars that he fixes. Me gusta mucho la mecánica y eso de sacar un carro eh, que esté en malas condiciones y ponerlo en buenas condiciones es una cosa que me apasiona mucho. Este es un. This is one of uh, what part of Fernando model. collection, and incredibly, it's the only car that he has not uh, needed to fix the engine. Now we want to see you driving. Isn't it amazing? Don't worry, we try first and we'll see, we'll see how easy it is. Come on, come on, go ahead. I'll take your side to do this. A little faster, a little faster, Jeff. It's kind of like going back in time where people related to each other in a very, in a very different way. So what we like to do is to really have you meet these people, the best of the people of Cuba, to really get, you know, to get into the culture the way we did, to understand it the way the locals do. And, you know, basically you'll, you'll go home with new friends. It's not just a tour company with a set of tour guides and, you know, it could, the big bus drops you off here and the big bus drops you off there. We actually don't do big buses. We try to limit our tours to seven people or less so that you really have a, a very personal experience with your guides. They help make Cuba a beautiful experience for you so that you can just relax, enjoy yourself, and have a great trip and really fall in love with Cuba the way I did.